Hi. Today we are discussing the future of technology in medicine with legendary Esther Dyson, who will be the keynote speaker at yet another conference in May. Hello, Esther. Thank you for joining us today. I'm delighted to be here. Thanks. Um, you are no stranger to Russian tech industry. What do you like about it the most? Uh, the creativity, the... So Russians tend to be well-educated. They understand math and statistics. It's a culture that celebrates learning, and so you have really strong technical teams. Uh, on the other hand, it's not a culture that celebrates health or uh, you know, all the things, you know, keeping your body healthy, you focus a little too much on your minds. Well, it's important because without a body that will support it, a mind, a mind can't operate. So yeah, if, you, if you're not living right, if you are too drunk or too sleepy, you can't think straight, you become in a bad temper, you, you don't have the fortitude to persist and, and running a startup is hard. Uh, you know, it's like the foundation of a, a brilliant mind is ultimately a healthy body. Do you see any positive trends in the Russian tech industry? To me, the most positive trend is applying technology to, to real problems, to useful things. I mean, my parents are both scientists, but actually I really love things that are useful, like logistics and, uh, you know, efficient, efficient business, efficient transportation systems, doing things in real time, dynamic scheduling, all this stuff. You mentioned your wonderful parents, and uh, what could IT professionals learn from scientists? Uh, to ask good questions. The, the questions are what ultimately leads to the answers. How do you think we could make Russian tech industry more competitive in the world market? Is there any way? So that's a, it's a very complicated question. I'm on the board of Yandex. You know, we are competitive in Russia, but there's competition in technology where we are with the best in the world. And then there's sort of the competition in culture, in understanding people's problems and how they, you know, understanding consumers outside of Russia. That's ultimately you need to, you need to understand the culture of the community that you're selling to. So that's, you know, we can compete technologically worldwide, culturally still more focused on Russia. What path should choose uh, today's students or school kids to be competitive tomorrow? So you can't answer that for every child. You know, you need to be the best of what you can do and want to do, because if you can't do it, you can't do it. And if you don't want to do it, you won't do it well. So you need to understand what you are good at, not what your parents think yeah. you should do, or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, or you know, but what actually motivates you. And then you need to be excited about it, you need to be focused, you need to have goals, uh, and then you need to have some purpose. And, and the purpose should not be to be CEO or to be rich. It should be, what do you want to accomplish with these gifts? And what skills would be most useful in the future? Ultimately, it's, it's those emotional character skills. Persistence, honesty, purpose, knowing how to communicate effectively with people. Not always being nice, but being constructively truthful. Why do we see more and more medical startups these days? Is this another hype or is there something bigger? Um, hype is usually too big, but underneath it there's something real. So I think, you know, again, people are realizing the human body is ultimately the source of everything. It's the source of creativity, of love, of, you know, it's the source of all our problems too. We're now at a stage where our short-term bodies fight against our long-term health. So yeah. the things we like in the short-term, like sugar and food and 
you know, staying awake all night watching videos instead of, including this one, instead of sleeping, isn't good for our health. And long run, it's bad for us. And so it's, it's the long term fighting the short term. Yeah. But why now? Uh, I think we haven't heard a lot of uh, medical startups 20 years ago, 15 years ago. What changed? Well, a number of things have changed. One, the market is simply much larger. Most people now have a cell phone. Most people now know how to use the internet. And they've started collecting data about other things. They check the weather. They check the stock prices. They check the news. Why not check the news about their own body? Why not manage their own data? So that's one thing. Second, there's a lot more Doctors are beginning to understand the importance, not just of medical information, but of health information and behavior information. So we're beginning to realize, oh yeah, sleep does affect how healthy you are. If you have cancer, you have a much better prognosis if you're healthy and you sleep enough and you're not addicted to something. So there's this big interaction. The third thing is a lot of the stuff around health It's not immediate. You know, I can live badly for five years. I can smoke for 40 years, and then I get cancer. So having big data, the ability to make predictions and to say, you know, of these people, five will get cancer because of the smoking or whatever. Being able to see, make that prediction, but also being able to say, because they did not smoke, these people are healthy. That that ability to compare what's happening to what should happen or could happen or would have happened is is part of making people willing to make the investment whether it's a financial investment or a behavior investment do we have now enough data to make such predictions we certainly have enough data to make them in general like i can walk into a school in the united states and look at the children and say two-thirds of these kids are going to be overweight or depressed or not graduate from high school. You know, it's obvious. I can't tell you which ones. And that's where it gets slightly difficult. You can, you can predict probabilities and statistics, and you can make some predictions about individuals, but not, you know. What medical technologies or services are the most promising today in your opinion? Well, you know, on the one hand, there's lots of stuff around curing cancer and, and so forth. And then there's all the, the behavior stuff, the Apple Watch, the Oura Ring from Finland, uh, the, you know, being able to monitor your sleep, being able to get feedback on your activity. Uh, that's tremendously important in behavior change. And the third thing that's really important is the ability to communicate with people. You know, what motivates you? to live effectively. Sometimes it's your children, sometimes it's a coach, sometimes it's somebody who reminds you at 6 a.m. to go to the gym. But the, the connection to other people, if you have some rare condition, being able to join a network of other people with that same condition or whose children also have Down syndrome or whatever it is, that, that connection is also really important. Is there any medical technology or service that you desperately want to happen? Uh, so, desperately, no. I mean, the, the obvious next one is really good, non-invasive, you know, blood sugar managing yeah. for diabetes, uh, liquid biopsies in general, so you can predict cancer or diagnose it, all that kind of stuff. Personally, I'm on the board of 23andMe. And so we have the ability to know your genome, but we still don't understand what it means because we need a lot more genomes. Well, in your case, we have a long English novel, and that's your genome. But we have just a very, very short dictionary, so you need a much bigger dictionary to actually read the whole novel. The medical industry is quite conservative. How could uh, technological companies persuade medical professionals to implement more data, more technologies, to be more open. Yeah, so there are really two markets. There's the medical market, let's go talk to the doctors, change what they do in the hospitals, make that all more efficient. And that's one part. And 
Partly you do it by showing them they can save money and save lives, but it's slow. Uh, partly that happens because new doctors, the young doctors, they're used to using cell phones. They find things out on Yandex, they're on VK. So why shouldn't they do something similar at work? Then on the other side, there are the consumers and they need to have time, they need to have money, they need to have understanding. But again, just the way we market music and VK and chocolates, you know, we, we're now starting to market health tools. And so both of those things are happening. You know, it would be nice to make them happen faster and good marketing will help, but it's also changing people's habits and, and the younger the people, the, the more, the less formed their habits are and the more they will adopt this stuff. So digital native doctors and digital native patients are our future. Yeah, except I would add not just the patients, but the people. The best thing for your health is to avoid being a patient in the first place, just to be a healthy person. So here, are, here is my last question. What advice would you give to kids who are watching us uh, regarding their health? What should we they do from um, the beginning? I mean, the first thing is don't eat too much, eat healthy food, don't drink too much, sleep a lot get some exercise, and do things that make you happy. Not things that make you happy in a foolish way, but things that make you happy over the long term. Thank you. It was Thank a pleasure you. talking to you. Let's do it again sometime. Thank you. In May. <laughs>